My problem is not the fake news, actually. My problem is that there's not enough real, truthful news out there. The European Commission says the level of corruption is breathtaking. When you look at criminals that operate across borders, you see this global kleptocracy that amasses huge amounts of wealth that's not distributed to anyone else. Corruption and crime account for probably 20% of the global economy. It's really one of the most destructive things on Earth. We're trying to tell this story to the world. People have power. They can change these systems. A fair trade watchdog reports that two-thirds of the 177 countries it surveys are below average in the corruption stakes. We're looking at organized crime and especially cross-border organized crime. There are criminal groups that operate at ease across frontiers, across continents. Crimes ranging from drug trafficking to trafficking in women and children and forced labor. And they launder money. You destroy the lives of millions and millions of people by not allowing businesses and economies and environments to, to develop. Their enemy should be law enforcement agencies, but these law enforcement agencies can't really leave the office. They can't go across borders to investigate the crime. And you don't have any global structure to investigate organized crime. So what's left then is the investigative reporters who can go across borders and can investigate these guys in multiple countries at the same time because we work in networks. OCCRP is a coalition of 45 investigative centers stretched around the globe. The story I would like to highlight today is about a finance minister. That are really dedicated to tell the people what's happening so that they have the information to, to make change. You don't want to only look at assets of him and his family, you want to look at assets that they've got hidden. Our job is really about following the money. We follow organized crime across the borders, we follow the companies, we follow the banks. Villains, dictators, authoritarian regimes, bad companies come and go, but the core figures in the system, the banks that facilitate the movement of funds, the accounting firms, the trust firms, this is the, the core of how corruption works. Do you have 2014 as well? Can I take yes, a look just to see what happened? These expenses sound completely fake and made up, so yeah. it's not real. When you investigate organized crime and corruption, what you realize is that the criminals employ the same method to steal public money. You see a lot of patterns. So that's when we started this initiative called the Investigative Dashboard, where we collected as much data as possible. If you've got a good system where you've captured large amounts of data, we can build out a topography of their network and identify assets that are hidden that we suspect are owned by them. If you look in the case of Azerbaijan, we've continued to publish stories that have really defined the regime as a corrupt dictatorship that is stealing large amounts of money from the people. Danish lender Danske Bank says billions of euros flowed through its accounts from Russia and ex-Soviet states. Maybe the most important effect of this investigation was that Danske Bank, which is one of the most important European banks, which was at the center of this scandal, was suddenly in the public spotlight, there was a huge public outcry in Denmark. Chief Executive Thomas Borgen quit following the money laundering investigation, saying it's clear that Dank's bank has failed to live up to its responsibility. This went like a shockwave through the banking industry. Eventually, these systems under their own corruption collapse. The president of Bosnia's Muslim Croat Federation has been arrested in an anti-corruption probe. The cases that OCCRP brings to us really makes our policy work better. You can talk for years before to them, you have to change this, this is dangerous, due diligence is due. Nothing happened, they're not going to pay attention. It's when those OCCRP stories are coming out. This is when policymakers really listen. We're kind of troublesome people. We are really, truly the last people defending the truth in some of our countries. We want a global community of investigative reporters sharing data, sharing techniques, working cross borders that is firmly tied to the public and the public good. They are stealing and stealing and stealing, but at the end, people will say no. 
all you can do is keep putting the facts on record so that the public as a jury builds up that momentum to pressure the change that needs to happen. We reveal the truth. We put out real news that is useful to the citizens to make informed decisions and demand justice.